Okay guys, welcome back. We're gonna get right into the charts. So Monday morning, we're kind of starting off with a rally. And I wanna point out just a few things that I'm seeing in the charts and we'll just take it from there. So, you know, each day we have to take the information that we're given and act accordingly, manage our risk, uh, you know, add to positions, lighten up positions. It, it's a very fluid, uh, you know, it's a very fluid environment. So we have to continue to just Evaluate what we have in front of us. So we're going to start out here with the triple Qs. And you can see, all right, so the main thing is I've got this green line coming off the March 2020 lows right here. And this is a trend line that we had a reaction up here in November. S several reactions kind of through here, a reaction here. And we recently broke down. Now, as of right now, they've recovered that trend line. So they you know it definitely as of right now looks like a false breakdown uh and we have to just continue to see how the day closes out so on the hourly chart that's what it looks like but let's look at the daily and again the daily is going to be more important so here's your daily if they sell this thing down and it closes back down at you know 321.50 or something somewhere right around there that could be you know this could have just been a a, a kickback rally and then they're going to fade it you know, oftentimes you'll you'll look for overshoots of specific levels. That's how they kind of shake people out of the trade. Uh, so again, as of right now on the hourly, it's a false breakdown. The daily, we have, you know, about another two hours to go. So we have yet to see kind of how the day closes. So kind of look for that and look for how that, you know, what what really, where we get the close. I think that's important. Uh, if we do, you know, if we do get that kind of breakdown into the close today, then, you know, I think we're likely to head lower and I'll probably look at about 307, 306.84 to be our first level. And then we've got another level right here at about 298. Uh, so those are the two levels to watch. Uh, we'd probably get a reaction at 298, you know, if we don't get one here at 306. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking for. On the daily chart, we still have negative divergence. So the rally that we're getting today has not burned through that negative divergence. That still remains, which tells me that we're likely to break down. But again, that daily close, we got to kind of wait for that. Here's the S&P 500, the SPY. We're looking at a daily chart. And again, the green line is coming off the March 2020 lows. We've got a reaction right here in October. And then we kind of coiled up. This one just created a... Pretty perfect bearish rising wedge. We obviously got the sell signal last week. Uh, we broke down and we have not recovered. So, you know, we could do a kickback rally. That's possible that the SPY wants to ramp all the way up and do another kickback rally. If that happens, then I think Q's is likely to, is to kind of recover that wedge that we broke down. Let me show you one more time. Q's is likely to probably run all the way up to here to about 325 and kind of hang out here for a little bit while SPY is doing a back test and then we break down. But if that happens, what I'll be looking for is just confirmation on the cues. I'd be looking for another sell signal or another breakdown of this green trend line. Until we get that, you know, until we get that on the daily, you know, then it, it's just not, it's just not a sell signal basically. We had one, this is a sell signal, but they stepped in and bought it up today. So unless we get the daily close back below, then again, might not be a sell signal. Uh, SPY has the sell signal, so it is still there, but we could back test. That's completely possible. SPY on the RSI and the PPO, here's your negative divergence. That remains intact, nothing's changed there. Uh, and so there, we still have clean negative divergence on both the RSI and the PPO. So the signal that we were likely to go lower but that doesn't mean that you can't, you know, back test for a little while and kind of chop sideways before you pick a direction. Here's volatility UVXY. Um, so this one, you know, having a little bit of a pullback, it had a really pretty quick, rapid ramp all the way from down here up to the highs was a move of about 50% in just a matter of days. So to see a little bit of a pullback, I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, I see support right around here, about 1275. Uh, so we could come down, hit that, uh, and then maybe I think, you know, if we get that continued drop in the markets, then we'll hit support in volatility, and then we're going to make another leg higher. Uh, and I see 2347 
as a potential target. Uh, so we'll watch for that. Again, volatility still has bullish divergence on the daily chart. That hasn't been negated. So until you see those negated or taken out or you start to put in negative divergence, I think this is likely just a pullback on the, the move to higher prices. So silver obviously is in the news because there's this potential short squeeze. I, I just don't see it. You know, yeah, it's playing out today a little bit, but I just don't see it being a sustained rally. So I think this is just a pump that's going on. And, you know, I'm not, I actually, so I was buying the silver miners just a few days ago, looking for that, looking for some sort of news announcement around this, this uh, short squeeze. We got it today. I sold all my silver miners that I had that I bought over the last few days. Uh, and, you know, I'm just looking for that. This is all the move I was looking for. So, uh, you know, silver, we had some resistance back here. If I go to the if I go to the daily here on the silver futures, this is basically the previous kind of zone we were in right through here, uh, which is about twenty nine thirty two. And you can see today they moved it above there, but it's it's now trading back below resistance. So I see this as a potential uh, level of resistance, and we're likely going to make uh, you know move down. Could be wrong, you know. It, we could see that that um, that uh, short squeeze, but I, I, I'm just not believing it as of yet. One of the reasons is gold's not really showing us that breakout. And gold and silver typically are going to trade together. Now, gold is a much larger market than silver. So, yes, there is the potential to squeeze the silver market, whereas it's going to be really hard for, you know, unless you have other forces at work for to squeeze the gold market. But gold's not showing any signs that it's broken its resistance. So we're just trading right up here around the top of the range, which is about 1863. You can see we've been in this sideways range for quite a while and we're just kind of hanging out there. So it is consolidating up here at resistance. So it could be building energy to break out. Uh, but until we see that breakout, it, we're just at the top of the range. So I would need to see the breakout and see, you know, watch the price action after it breaks out to see if it can stick. Okay, the dollar, watch the dollar. And I've talked about this for a few weeks now. The dollar continues to look bullish. You can see here, this is the DX dollar futures. And you can see we are uptrending clearly. Now we've been in this sideways range for a while, but each time we come down to the bottom, uh, you know, kind of make a dip, they're stepping in earlier and buying it up. So you can clearly see we're make, we made the low back here, higher low, higher low. This is kind of a higher low through here and a higher low through here. So we're making higher lows and we just, you know, and now here's the high. We're starting to break out to the upside. If we see the dollar start to rally, look for, you know, look for a lot of shorts to cover. And that's going to put pressure on the market. A rising dollar should put pressure on the market. So potential there. Continue to watch that one. Here's the DXY. This one's just up near the top of its range. It's been up here before, right about there at, oh, let's see where that's falling at. That's about 90, 90, 94 or so. So, you know, 91, we'll call it a close above 91. We'll, we'll you know, we'll look for that as the breakout point. Uh, and if that happens, dollar should continue to kind of rally some more and stocks should see, you know, should see some downward pressure along with gold. Uh, we're still kind of, you know, we're still testing that we haven't quite broke out yet so we're we need to see a little bit more confirmation on that here's a little bit of a different look at the tech sector so this is xlk which is technology stocks it's pretty much microsoft and apple but it doesn't have amazon in it uh, and you can see here coming off the march 2020 lows we had a reaction there we had a reaction there and we had some reactions through here false breakdown right there uh, and, but this one is a lot, you know, this was a lot more of an impulsive breakdown here. So impulsive breakdown there, relatively decent volume on the, on the start of that. And today you can see they're just ramping that up right to resistance. So again, is this, was this a bear trap or does it, you know, run up to resistance and, and is this where it gets rejected? So here's the hourly look of that. So far it has not recovered. But again, we'll wait till the daily close to see what's going on. 
and then tomorrow we will be it most likely will be pretty obvious tomorrow uh you know after the first hour what what we have going on here whether it was a bear trap or a uh or just a kickback rally to resistance uh this one on the daily uh, still has negative divergence so these divergences are telling me that it's likely we're going lower and but again if this is a bear trap then maybe you got you know some energy stored up to ramp higher and if they ramp higher you could always burn through the divergences something like that where you make a new high in the rsi really above this level back here however you know that hasn't happened yet so as of right now we're at resistance with negative divergence we've had a sell signal this is an objective area to basically take a starter sh or you know add to a short take a starting short position uh doesn't mean it's going to work no, no guarantees but it's you know it's objective here so we gotta just take what we got in the charts so apple apple had a false breakout right here this was a bull trap now we should not recover this area if we get back into this area really above this uh 138.50 then we're then you know this is likely going to continue higher okay so the point is you know we got to watch apple what i'm looking for now is a breakdown of this trend line it's because this one's kind of coming off this uh, november thing but we've had four reactions now so you got one right here one there one there and then the recent reaction so a breakdown of that right there about 130.88 is kind of your next sell signal on Apple. Uh, and you're going to want to see that if Q's, if a Q short's going to work, you're going to need to see Apple break down. So watch for that. That's important. Microsoft, they ramped that up today. It hit its previous high that was right here. And then so far it's, it's getting rejected, but still up near the top of the range. So watch for that microsoft you know hasn't shown weakness yet it's still kind of looking like it's ramping higher uh again for a, you know for confirmation that microsoft's going to have a false breakout you're going to want to see 227.75 go an impulsive breakdown of that and that's going to be a false breakout otherwise you know this is a breakout as of right now and you know it does have negative divergence you can see microsoft's negative divergence right here on the daily and the RSI, or sorry, the PPO and the RSI. Uh, but again, you know, unless we turn down and to kind of turn down in the area where we're at, then we can burn through those negative divergences. So something to watch there. Here's the energy sector XLE continues to look weak to me. I mean, we're seeing a little bit of a bounce today, up a percent, and you know, about a percent and three tenths. But again, it's just continuing to look, you know, make lower highs and lower lows and trend downward. So I'm still looking for 37.64. Uh, and that's about another, from where we're at now, that's about another 5 6%. And we'll see, you know, if we break that, then, you know, I'm looking for all the way down here at 34.32. I'm not so sure we're going to break it, but, you know, I think we are going to at least get down there about another 6%. And from when I started to talk about this trade really up here, that's a drop, a potential drop of about 15, 16%. So that's kind of what we're looking for to continue. Snap here. So this this pattern that I have marked out is starting to get, it's starting to not make any sense anymore. Um, you know, we have this gap, we've got this rising wedge. We broke to the upside twice, three times actually, broke down to the bottom, broke up. It, it's a pattern that's starting to get voided out. So I'm going to have to, well, you know, the, the bottom still looks okay, but the top up here just is starting to not make any sense. So we have to readjust it to something like this. Uh, and we'll just continue to watch that. I'm not in this one. Uh, so, you know, I don't know, but clear negative divergence right here on the daily chart. You can see the PPO and the RSI have big negative divergence. So we need the, you know, we need that impulsive sell signal. It looked like it was was there the other day, but uh, it's not there as of today. Nike continues to look good to the downside, getting a little bit of a rally um, the last few days. We, you know, we hit support right here at 131. It's about 130.90, and we ran right up to the top of the range. Then we now we've just been kind of trading the last couple of days in the middle of the range, so we could run up to the top again. But I think we're going to trade within this range and then continue our way down. Uh, you know, I, ultimately, I think 90, Nike is going to probably trend all the way down to you know 100 or so. 
And where does, you know, where's that trend line come from? Well, you look at the daily chart. This rolls all the way back to the 2009 lows. You can, nice uptrend line right there. So you can see, you know, a move down to there would really just be a move down to the, mo the major bull market trend line in Nike. And that's where I think we're going in this one. Uh, negative divergence is still intact on the RSI on the daily chart. And I don't see a bullish divergence or anything telling me that we're you know, gonna have much of a rally. But if you look at the hourly, uh, you can see, yeah, there's not even any bullish divergence on the hourly. So to me, this just looks like a little bit of a rally, uh, but and kind of, we're kind of bear flagging out and then we're gonna head lower uh, and make our next move. Where, where does it go? Well, the major target on this flag looks to be about something like about there. So a breakdown to 122 or, you know, potentially lower. <clears throat> PayPal, PayPal broke down the other day. Here's this blue trend line where we were just walking up on the hourly chart uh, and we had a sell signal where you break, we gap down, and now we're just getting that kickback rally basically to what looks like resistance right up here. I had this line marked out at about 244.22. So we're at resistance. You can see we're starting to turn down. I think that's likely the end of the bounce. They could they could pop it above this and then fail. That's possible, you know, stop rate. But uh, I think it's likely to fail and reject around this 244 area. If we continue down lower, then we've got some support. You know, there's a gap down here, um, down at 223. Uh, so I think we're likely to head down to that direction. And if we break, I think we're going all the way down to this 206. 50 area looking at the daily chart on this one negative divergence right there it remains intact uh and so that's to me this just looks like a, a you know a kickback rally in what's starting a downtrend same here with etsy <clears throat> this is the uptrend line on the hourly chart it's been walking up that trend line broke down here so that was that was your sell signal wasn't that impulsive though and we didn't have negative divergence in play when it broke, well, it did on the hourly, but not on the daily. If you go to the daily here, the negative divergence didn't really show up till we got the back test right here. So we broke down right there, no negative divergence. You can see right here, we didn't have it. And then when you ran up and did a back test and started back testing the broken trend line from, from below, you also put in negative divergence right there. Uh, and we had that on the PPO as well. So, <clears throat> And then, you know, big uh, sell, sell candle, breakdown candle right there, a bearish engulfing candle uh, with confirmation. There's your confirmation candle and getting a little bit of just a pretty muted rally. You can see big breakdown selling and just muted rally on the way up. So we're pretty much at resistance, which is about the bottom of this candle. They could run it up to the middle of the candle, about 213, 214, anything above 214. On a daily close, I'd probably be looking to stop out. Uh, we can go ahead and mark that out, but that's you know somewhere right around up there. I'd be looking to stop out on a daily close above that. Uh, I don't suspect you'll get that daily daily close above there. To me, it looks like it's going to reject here at about 205, heading lower. Next stop 166.92. Peloton. So Peloton had the breakdown right here. Here's your breakdown candle. But Peloton, the, the best entry on Peloton was right up here at the back test of this broken trend line from the March 2020 lows. So there's your daily chart walking up there. Broke here, but no negative divergence. So then it ran up and did a back test and created that negative divergence. Uh, and so it was back testing major resistance with negative divergence. That's a clean spot. Uh, and so far, that's continuing to work to the downside. You can see really from that entry, it's down about 8%. It's just been flagging out, kind of holding this 144.93 area. So a daily close below that would be your next sell signal. Um, and you can just kind of see how we're just kind of flagging out here. So looking for that next impulsive breakdown to signal lower prices. Okay, here's Qualcomm. <clears throat> looking at the daily chart, you can see nice clean uptrend rally right here. Lots of tags along this support line. We broke, there's your sell signal, and they're doing a back test. So if it recovers and you get the daily close above, then it's a bear trap or a false breakdown. Uh, otherwise, this is, an, uh, this is a back test. So you see we broke down here, 
almost back tested there, but we didn't. And then we're ramping up for another, you know, we're basically right at resistance. Should get rejected here. Uh, if it doesn't, and we get that daily close above, uh, look for, you know, look for what, how that's going to behave the following day. Let's say today they ramp it up and close it just slightly above support. What's tomorrow bring? I would expect in the first hour of tomorrow, they sell it down back below that trend line and it, and then it continues to reject and head lower. If it doesn't and you get the ramp and it holds, then that's a false breakdown or a bear trap. Those are always possible. So, you know, just like a false breakout is possible, a false breakdown is possible as well. This one does have negative divergence on the daily chart right there on the RSI and the PPO. And it has a break, a break of the trend line support. So I'm watching for how this one behaves. It looks like an objective area to add to a short position. Uh, but again, you know, just manage your risk. Zillow Group still looks fine. Here's your trend line on the daily chart. There's your sell signal and we got confirmation. So two days, you got a breakdown with, with follow-up selling. So that's confirmation. We're having a kickback rally today. So this thing can go all the way up to, you know, 147.40. It could even go to the, about the middle of the trend line or even back test this, this trend line way up here. We could, we could run up and make a new, slightly marginal new high and extend the negative divergence. So those are possible scenarios. I still see each one of these lines that I pointed out as potential to add uh, or start a uh, short position. Okay, so I talked about this one, Digital Turbine APPS, the other day. And um, on Friday, I took a, a starting short position trying to anticipate a gap down. Uh, we didn't get the gap down, so I covered the position first thing this morning uh, for a very small loss because, it, again, it was a starting short position and it was, you know, hanging out pretty much near where, uh, where I took the position at. Uh, and, again, waiting for that sell signal on this one. So... On the daily chart, you can see nice clean up trend line from the March. Well, this one goes to April 2020 lows, walking up that trend line. We're starting to create that bearish rising wedge pattern. So it's starting to wedge out negative divergence on the daily chart across both PPO and the RSI, signaling that a reverse in trend is coming. We just don't have that sell signal. So until that shows up, I'll just continue to watch it. And Citibank here, it just continues to kind of drift lower. Um, I see a potential for a little bounce here, uh, you know, because we have bullish divergence on the hourly chart right there. Uh, this is a divergent low that we're kind of made. So we could get a bounce, you know, maybe bounce back up to resistance around 6160. Uh, and that's just on the shorter time frame. If you look at the daily, though, I still think it's likely that we're heading lower, uh, going down to about 5357. Uh, and then we'll see, you know, I think we'll hit that target for sure. And then obviously I've got 49.09 as the next target. Those are the only two targets that I really think we're, you know, we just got to watch those and see how the market's setting up, the general market setting up, uh, if or when we get down there. So that's all I got, guys. I'm going to get this one out to you guys and um, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks. Bye.